Gano, and welcome to another edition of City of Churches. Today, today we're in Manhattan to explore a church that houses a collection of religious statues that have special meaning to all the neighborhood generations of Catholics that grew up here in this neighborhood. Now there was once a large cherry orchard here in the 1700s, which is how Cherry Street got its name. Although he didn't chop down any of those trees, George Washington became America's first president and he lived right here in the mansion at number one Cherry Street. That's just a few blocks from here. Now you could say the first White House was right here on Cherry Street. How ironic. Lord & Taylor's, the famous clothing company, opened their first store here in 1826. This was quite a prosperous area for many years. Now, during the American Civil War, these New York City draft riots, well, they occurred right here on Catherine Street. But the neighborhood, well, it fell on hard times. This eventually became a haven for poor immigrants. First the Irish, then in the 1880s, the Italian immigrants. The madcap 20th century comedian, Jimmy Durante, ah, cha, 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 was born on Catherine Street in 1892. Another famous resident was four-term New York State Governor, Al Smith. Now, he was a Catholic and grew up at 25 Oliver Street, and he was part Irish and part Italian. Now, he ran for the office of the President of the United States against Herbert Hoover in 1928. Now, he was the first Catholic presidential candidate. I'm standing outside number 17 Monroe Street. Now, this building, it, well, it was the first home for Mr. and Mrs. Antonino Di Domenico. Now, they immigrated from Sicily in the 1890s. And they were married in 1899, and they were devoted parishioners here for 30 years. Now, Mrs. D. Domenico, she did a lot of fundraising for San Giuseppe's church. And she did that in the early 1920s. It's pretty impressive. Now, as you can see from some of these old photos, well, this neighborhood here it was a heck of a lot different in the 20th century. You see, most of this neighborhood, well, it was torn down in the 1930s for urban renewal. And it was to make way for the Knickerbocker houses and the Ausman housing projects. Well, here we are on the streets of Lower Manhattan. So I want to tell you a little bit about this neighborhood. Right here is a playground, but it used to be a bunch of housing tenements that were here many years ago. And that was at 135 Cherry Street. Many Italian immigrants found work in the garment industry uptown, especially four girls from Cherry Street. Now in 1911, one of the worst fires in New York City occurred at the Triangle Factory in Greenwich Village. Now there's a story about these four girls from Cherry Street, and to tell us a little bit about them and what happened is our own producer, Lumiano. Blue, how hey. are you, buddy? Hey, Anthony. Hey, it's, it's great to see you in front of the camera, always in back of it. Please tell us, uh, viewers, about the uh, four girls from Cherry Street. Two of the girls were my great aunts, Frances, and Santina. Really? And they worked at the Triangle Factory there along with their cousin, Rose, and their best friend, Josie. And these four girls worked uptown at the Triangle Factory. On March 25th, 1911, there was a huge fire there, and the girls were trapped in the building along with quite a few other employees. Now, in those days, the fire department ladders could only reach the sixth floor, and these girls were trapped on the eighth and ninth floor. So three of the girls died in the fire. But my great aunt Frances, even though her clothes and her hair were on fire, she closed her eyes and made a sacred promise to the Blessed Mother that if she could escape the fire, she would devote her life to God. So next thing she knew, she was up on the roof being led to safety with no recollection of how she got up there. Really? Three years later, she kept her sacred promise and she took her vows and became a nun, Sister Mary Albertina, with the Palatine Sisters. Wow. And as a result of the fire, that's why today we have fire escapes, fire drills, fire sprinkles in the building, and that was all a result. And it, they've become known in, in New York City history as the girls from Cherry Street. And it being that we're here on Cherry Street on the block where these girls lived, it's kind of appropriate to bring up their story again so people don't forget. That's really a great story, Louis. I hope our viewers uh, have some knowledge on that, the four girls from Cherry Street. I want to thank you. All right. for coming on and and um and uh, i'll get back behind the camera and all right, continue Lou. the show now when we come back we're going to meet father lino gonzalez now he's the current pastor of saint joseph's san giuseppe's church don't go away
today. Today we're in Manhattan's Lower East Side and we're at St. Joseph's Church. And I'm here with Father Lino Gonzalez. Nice to meet you. Father, nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this beautiful church and our viewers and my crew here to talk about St. Joseph's. Sure. Now, I understand that this was not the original church at this location. My producer, Lou, he's so efficient, Lou. He gets all these pictures. This, this is the original St. Joseph. I want to show it to so. our viewers. built St. Joseph, another chapel, uh, which was the mission of St. Joachim. Uh, they put uh, in this church of uh, St. Joseph, so it became the main parish. This is the location that is, is the church location for a long time. To, uh, this year we celebrate 90 years wow. of, uh, of this uh, parish. Well, when the immigrants came here, uh, they needed places of worship. They needed sure. a church, and like this Lower East Side that we're at, uh, was predominantly Italian at one point. It is something very personal of these Italians who had maybe not that much uh, finances at that time. They contributed their faith along with this money, little money they gave, and others made a lot of sacrifice to build uh, this whole area as the Italian area uh, of their own culture. So in, in a way, they made a big sacrifice uh, due to their faith. Sure. Otherwise, they would never build such a huge building and, uh, and this is a national church of Italians so naturally uh, they have a very uh, strong link to this day to come the, to this parish. My uh, producer Lou again showed me a picture that I, I'll show you, I, I want to show this to the viewers first, that you see the church is here and on this side of the street there were all buildings and there's a bakery there and everything yes. that no longer exists, it's no longer yes. there. It's amazing how, in times, it changes. I'm, it looks like I'm looking at a, a, an old-time movie picture here. Sure. You know, like from the 1930s and sure. stuff like that. I believe yes. what the cars were about that at that time. Yes, yes. Are there any statues or artifacts here from the original church? Yes. Most of these uh, artifacts and, uh, and the images, everything, are brought from St. Joachim. I was going through the history of it and I see that all these images uh, of different saints and different uh, uh, things that you see here are very traditional and they come from their own local uh, villages in Italy. Wow, and this is how this uh, devotion of this whole uh, culture that is of different places, they are not one people from one area. They may be from down south, but they have their differences yeah, know, of the, different the, cultures. So they brought their own uh, saints here and they were given a place to put up in this uh, several uh, niches. That, uh, and, that is, uh, and, and these are the original statues. Yes, yes. They're well kept. They actually yeah. look beautiful for being nine altars, years old. Small altars, you can say. I, yeah, <laughs> they, I, I'm sure that they've, they've been kept, you know, well kept. And the statues above the altar, Yes. it, it kind of has that almost like you were in Rome. Yes. If you get the feeling yes. that I, I yes. see. It's sure. The way it's designed. Yes. They're not pillars, but it has that as almost, you would almost see pillars on side of the way it was designed. This whole uh, sanctuary uh, the, and also the parts of this church, everything, it's a, it's a Roman design. That's, uh, I kind of get that from And also look. Byzantine, yeah. Byzantine. So there are two mixtures of these two, two art here. So Byzantine and and the Roman. The Roman is the middle part of it. You see the whole thing uh -huh. and like a Roman uh, structure there. And this is how these saints that are put there are the saints that people really had great devotion. So this is how these saints and Our Lady, everything they put at the center uh, to feel that presence of their faith. Father, I'd like you to tell us about the St. Rocco statue. The St. Rocco statue, it's one of the best thing that happened to this parish of uh, St. Joseph. Uh, St. Uh, Rocco's statue that you see on the side that we display always is a very heavy one to carry and it has a very good artistic uh, 
effect on it. Everything is perfectly done, and you have the angels down there. You have the wound of the of uh, of uh, Saint Rocco shown to people, and you have the dog that was uh, helping him to bring the bread when he was uh, without food. And there is a, such a, a beauty of this statue, but we cannot take this uh, huge statue out there for the procession. We have the smaller version of it, which is not, which is light, and we take take it uh, for the procession. Yeah, I would imagine that has yes, to weigh a yes. ton. I think they were taking it uh, when they started at the beginning from this parish. They used to take it when then they found it too heavy to carry. And this is how this statue, and it has something very appealing to everyone because uh, it is uh, built up in such a way to to show his sanctity. Fu came with such a humility uh, to a place that was a pestilence, and he caught himself that pestilence. And then you see how the dog helping him um, to survive, and he sacrificed his own life to serve these uh, Italians who were struggling with this. Uh, this is, and we see that uh, this whole statue represents uh, how a noble character like uh, Saint Rocco made his life available to the people of uh, of this uh, South Italy at that very difficult time. But that image reflects a very holiness of this person from his uh, inner self. So it is th this statue that uh, is so much uh, appreciated and so much uh, being, uh, being cherished by the people. And uh, I think it was even used uh, for movies, even when they wanted to do their, their things uh, as Italians. So it is something very special for these uh, people. And they always ask me when they come in, where is the statue of Saint, Saint Rocco and the original one? And this is the one I show them. This statue has uh, not only just artistic effects, but it tells the whole story of uh, the past, how this great man humbled himself to glorify God and to bring his inner self. And that inner self, I think, is brought up in this uh, beautiful statue that was made by this artist. Oh, wow. Now, for the past 124 years, the annual feast of St. Rocco's procession has taken place on the Lower East Side. <laughs> The tradition has continued at St. Giuseppe's Church and raises funds for the parish. What can you tell us about Father Vincent Genuzzi? Now, Vincent Genuzzi was uh, the pioneer uh, for this mission of Scalabrinis. He came in uh, 1888 and then uh, uh, in his life, he, he was the one who really made this whole area a, a living faith for the Italians. Then he built St. Joseph, so he is the pioneer for the whole uh, Italian immigrants community that came over in wow. the U.S. My producer put a quote in here that I'm looking at. When listening to the chimes of St. Joseph's Church, pray to God for the Reverend Vincent Giannuzzi. Yeah, He worked so hard in his life and everything that uh, they wanted to keep his memory always that uh, whenever pray for his soul for that his was, for really his nice. life for his life because after all he did so much of uh, of work the heritage the history the tradition that was brought on and, and to a great priest that did this i mean it must have been hard for him to uh building this church it's almost like he had a knock on yeah. door to door yeah. and they were ready to help because they were they were in hundreds and thousands that came from Italy at that time the dedication for them to come here yes. and want to succeed in life and to to better their families that's the drive and, sure. and, and then to sure. come to a church 
and to build a church and to sure. worship and to pray to God sure. and to thank him for blessing sure. them to come here. They did as a group, but they did with great faith and trust in God that we are doing this for the greater glory of God because that gave them uh, motivation also to sacrifice not only for their children and their family, but also for the community as a whole to survive and be that uh, prominent people that you have today in, uh, in New York and other places who have moved from here. And I know them and I see some of them and they still come to this parish. Now that's nice that, it, that, that they've succeeded in life yes. here in America and uh, descendants of the original yes. people come here and they still come back to this original church. How many people can be seated in here? No, the capacity here, sitting capacity is 850. It's amazing that you yes. can get 800. You would look at this and you would yeah. never think that 850 yes. people, but I, in those days, it was packed for six masses. Now this church was dedicated in what year? It was dedicated in uh, 1926, 8th of June. Why was the church named after St. Joseph or St. Giuseppe? Now, St. Joseph, uh, as I hear from so many Italians, he's a good carpenter. So naturally, Italians are good carpenters <laughs> as well. <laughs> yes, so, you got a good point there. So they, 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 the first thing comes is St. Joseph is so well equipped with this uh, manual work as well as work, the hard work that they do. So they, the, this saint was really for them the best. And they had the devotion in their own villages in many of the Italian towns, I think, of St. Joseph's. They carried out uh, that same type of a devotion in the uh, place they immigrated or migrated. So this is uh, immigration brings what the memories of their homeland over here. And that makes them feel that they are at home. And that's a good thing that they did because that is what uh, finally we go for, where we are born. So they longed to go back, but they could not. So they have their children they have, are here. They have pieces of uh, their grandchildren are here. They could not return home even if they wanted to. Yep. How old is the pipe organ? No, the pipe organ was uh, was fixed in 1940s. Uh -huh. So. Uh, the, it's still working condition, everything, we try to repair it whenever there is need and, uh, and it is kept uh, in quite a good shape. As I walk, you know, you, you come down, you got Little Italy, you got Chinatown, you're walking through. How has the neighborhood changed over the years? I noticed that the, the, the inscription outside still says St. Giuseppe's. Yeah, I see that the changes are tremendous in this area. The, most of the Italians, uh, they, they educated their children very well, so they moved to uh, suburbs. So this whole change affected this area in a big way for the Italians. But there are always the immigrants, the new immigrants that come. They came the Spanish and then came the Chinese. And there are so many uh, immigrants that come in today even. But the main ones at present in this parish are Chinese and the Spanish that uh, we are serving, uh, beside the Italians and other English community. So we have here uh, a lot of changes that happens also in the neighborhood as such. So the whole area is changed. But at the name carries as it is, San Giuseppe, but then we name it in the English way, St. Joseph. St. Joseph. We really celebrate a little of, uh, with uh, Italian is at St. Rocco, we have uh, some prayers and a uh, reading done by the Italians. When we come back, Father's gonna show us what's his favorite, I guess, artifact? Yes, sure. Or relic here at St. Joseph's. So we'll be right back.
Father, and as we come to this point in every episode, uh, when I ask the priest or the pastor or the Monsignor, uh, what's their favorite relic or artifact in their church? Now here at St. Joseph's, what's yours? Mine will be uh, San Vincenzo Martire. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, this whole uh, life of this uh, beautiful saint because this saint is a young saint, he is a warrior, and uh, he, he is a person who is, who is asked to join this legion. They were asked to, to worship other gods of, uh, of uh, Rome. And they said, we are not going to do it. And they gave their life as a witness uh, uh, for, for, this, uh, for this Maximilian who was in charge of the army. And they said, you are to give us only order of army, not of religious orders. And we are not going to obey this religious order because this is not of the army. And yet he ordered them to, to be killed. And the most important thing of this uh, whole life of this Vincenzo was that they were asked to join the army. They won the war, but they lost good young men who were killed just because of faith, not because of a military command. And that's why uh, their faith stands very, very high. And his relic in a little in, yes. piece of it in there. Yeah, we have uh, only two three bones and that's the relic we have. So it's something very, very, very amazing for me. But they gave their lives after giving their whole energy to save the nation of Italy. And this is what really uh, matters. Faith is what keeps us going and he teaches for this society and for our community here at St. Joseph that faith is one of the important thing to move forward in life. I want to thank you so much, Father Lino. You're welcome. For showing us such a beautiful church. I mean, St. Joseph's, it stands on its own. There's such great work and such statues and, 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 and such history of this neighborhood. So, uh, I'd like to thank you so much for watching our show. And if you have any questions uh, about St. Joseph's, um, you could uh, email us. You could follow us on Facebook or Twitter, or you could write into us at uh, City of Churches, 1712 10th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215. Until the next time, I'm here with Father Lino Gonzalez at St. Joseph's. Thank, thank you, you so thank much you. for watching Thanks. us. Thank you, Father. God welcome. bless you, and we'll see you on the next episode.